And with a day's rest, that could change. Duke in the white uniforms to start. Boy, these two teams match up perfectly man to man. You love all five of the matchups. Oh, yeah. Yes, Every matchup is critical and important. And there's a foul on Nazi Muhammad. Now, one of the big advantages that Kentucky has is they really have two postmen defensively with size. Nazi Muhammad, of course, and Jamal uh, McGlure can come in for him. And they basically balance out the 40 minutes in playing time. So there is an advantage, Kentucky, in that regard. Brand, a freshman from Peekskill, New York. Pulled down a career high 14 rebounds in the win over Syracuse on Friday night. It's a miraculous thing that this young man missed 15 basketball games carrying 260 pounds, came back actually weighing less and in excellent condition and has really played well. Nobody expected he'd even be back this year. First time in the tournament, Kentucky has trailed after wins over South Carolina State, St. Louis, and UCLA. Edwards short on the three. Langdon comes out of the pack. Big key to see him hit a shot early. Wow. Wojo, long range three, five nothing Duke. When is the last time you've seen Wojo looking for his jump shot four feet beyond the three point line at the start of a basketball game? I don't know if I've ever seen him do that. Over the top, Muhammad with position for Kentucky's first basket. Situation right there, well set up by Tubby Smith. No weak side help for the lob. Here comes the full court pressure. What do you expect out of this today, Billy? Well, I think that they will, and, and this is kind of interesting. We find a situation where Wojo has been taking away from the basketball. Carowell, who's pretty good at bringing up the ball, although he doesn't do it often. Langdon, his first shot, drops! You don't know the sigh of relief on that bench. Every single player stood up. They want to see him hit often and early. That was a three-point goal, 8-2 to two Duke. Switching out front by Duke. Shepard a lot bigger than Wojo. He can go right over him. Just and shoot does. over him. And Carowell skies for the rebound. Carowell became a starter here in the tournament. It started six games during the middle of the season. Back in the starting lineup for Radford in round one. And it stayed there. McLeod, their leading scorer. Way off the mark. Out to Shepard. There's Padgett, who plays uh, a little bit bigger than McLeod's used to see in gardening. Padgett about 6'9". And away from the ball, Brand a little too cozy with Nazi Muhammad and both centers now with one foul apiece. Jim, he was all right until he grabbed the shirt, which basically is an intentional foul, but obviously not called that way early in the game. There's going to be a lot of pushing inside. See how close they call that post defense. Magic over McLeod, and McLeod retrieves. Good job by McLeod to put a body on the shooter on the way down so they had inside position for the rebound. Carowell challenging Edwards. Surprised that Duke is relying on this jump shot early. They get a foul on Nazi Muhammad early. They should go into Brand. Edwards three at the other end. Allen Edwards having a big NCAA tournament. Here we see Trajan Langdon bring it up. So you really have three guys in the backcourt can bring the ball up the court. The one thing Duke is not doing is attacking against the press. Langdon again from the wing. Shepard lost his man. Trajan Langdon wide open for the jumper. Cloud takes it to the paint to Carwell. Banks it home. Good interior passing by McLeod. Well, that bounce pass Jim, is so valuable down inside the lane. 10-5 doubles. These two teams with extraordinarily deep benches. No subs to this point. Turner, Shepard tips, and Muhammad finds the goal. Good long reach by Muhammad. College basketball's most improved player. He was on the JV team two years ago. Imagine it. Reach in on Edwards. We're going to see a lot of bench play here today, Billy. And, well, Muhammad, just a moment ago. You can see Brand gets out of position on that rebound, has no chance to put a body on him. The great hands of Nazi Muhammad put it back in. Had six huge blocks against UCLA in the ball game on Friday. And his backup, McGlure, added six of his own. Shane Battier will be checking in on the next whistle, the first sub of the game. Brand. The fake with Muhammad on his back. It's a dangerous play for Muhammad to reach his hand, and he should have just let Brand put that one away. Nice double pump. Doesn't want to pick up two fouls here so quickly. And a push off on McLeod. 
Good job by Shepard to recognize. We'll see the pass on the inside. Good bounce pass. Brand goes up. He feels the pressure on the back. So he double clutches it, brings the ball down in front of his face. Battier, a freshman from the Detroit area, comes in. How do you uh, decipher which team has the best pitch? Well, here we go. Carowell first. Duke has doubled up Kentucky here early. Jim, you see Kentucky team that has not been turning the ball over, particularly Wayne Turner himself. Been sensational in NCAA tournament play. Assist turnover, assist and turnover ratio. And as he floats to the basket, Wojo commits the foul. Turner to the line for two. Wojo will likely go out of the game. It's William Avery, another two freshman. He's about to come in. What I was just asking about the, the two benches here. Which one is better, or can you tell? Well, I, I would have to say, Jim, that we're looking at two of the deepest benches in the country. I'd like to make a little uh, connection here. The, the quality of the player on the bench for Kentucky this year compared to what Rick Pitino took to the national championship is not the same in terms of ability. I would say that Duke's bench probably has more ability, but it's younger. And in the case, uh, and particularly in the case of Evans, when he comes into the ball game, you're talking about an experienced bench player. So, and the depth of a bench is really not that important if your first six or seven players are healthy at this time of year. 14 to nine, Duke leads at the first break. Real beating that particular day, and now they're back on their feet. And Stanford will take on the winner of this game. Everything's back in action, lights. And here's McLeod, too strong. Good rebound, Turner, who's celebrating a 22nd birthday today. Kicks it out, Edwards gives nice. it up. Underneath, batted away by Battier, and Muhammad tipped twice. Out to Shepard. No foul on the play. Yes, there is finally a foul call on Carowell. Well, University of Kentucky in that occasion, Jim, they just had too many good jumping bodies in there. Nazi Muhammad had perfect position. Shepard, the seven-foot high jumper in high school with great elevation ability. This kid is some athlete. Kentucky's starting five remains on the floor. Duke with two subs. We saw Battier, and then William Avery entered, and he came in not for Wojo, but for Trajan Langdon. Makes this team on the floor right now, in my estimation, a little too small to play against Kentucky. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Well, Kentucky certainly had enough second chances on that one. That's right. You, you're talking about Shepard, who's a leaper. Wojo, three, not this time, not to Shepard. This, this uh, is a good matchup right now for Kentucky, in my opinion. Shepard lost it on the drive. Here comes Avery. Two on three, so the freshman waits. McLeod kicks it out. Wojo's one, two from here. Two, three from behind the arc. There's the gutty little general of this basketball team looking for his shot tonight, unlike what he's been doing throughout his career where he's passed first, shoots second. Back screen that time by Shepard trying to get Padgett for the lob. One of Kentucky's favorite offensive maneuvers. Shepard over Battier, and he got a piece of the arm. He'll shoot three. three. Battier, the tremendous freshman defender. One of the best I've seen come into college basketball in a long, long time. When you think of uh, great defenders, of course, Duke has had the National Defensive Player of the Year a number of times. The first one was Tommy Amaker that they had. Of course, you remember Billy King? Billy King followed him. And, and a guy who wasn't bad by the name of Grant Hill was a pretty fair defender. Talking about Battier's defense, he drew 26 charges this year. No one else on the Duke team was in double figures in that category. Now Langdon, the starter, comes in for Wojo, and another freshman, Chris Burgess. And Jim, what that points out is how well he has been instructed by his high school coaches, particularly to move his feet defensively instead of reaching with his hands. Normally, a guy who draws charges is a guard, not a six foot nine inch freshman forward. Here in Avery, he's had a fine tournament. Driving on Shepard out to Carowell. Avery's had 17 assists, only five turnovers, and he fires the three. Kentucky controlling the boards with this lineup on the floor here. Duke gets one and done. And Burgess reached around, no doubt about that one. There's a foul of inexperience there. He's got no position on Nazi Muhammad. 
He's behind him. The ball's in the low post. He might as well let him have it and then look for some help. Here's the man you like, Hashimu Evans, transfer from Manhattan College, played in the tournament for Manhattan three years ago. Remember why I like him is he comes in and he makes things happen. I think he really is an explosive player off the bench. The great Frank Ramsey, All-American Kentucky, became the great first sixth man for the Boston Celtics. That's what Evans gives to this club. Now look at Turner. He looks like he's hurting a little. Terrific drive here on the outside. One of the real good floating shots. He's too quick for Battier out in that position. Battier commits his second and as Turner slams into the standard, the scoreboard's jarred loose again also. You know, let me put Turner in perspective if you're scouting Kentucky. The first two years he plays for Kentucky, the first year he is one for four from three. The second year he's four for 15 from three. That's five three-point shots he makes Time in two years. What does that tell you? He's going to put the ball on the floor and try to penetrate to the basket. Turner will have a chance to complete the three-point play. Lights are out again. Duke leads by two. So each year you got a chance to move up in the number of wins. That's not to take anything away, obviously, from Mike, but certainly not Coach Wooden and Coach Smith. Turner, three-point play, makes it a one-point Duke lead. Allows them to get in the press. So far, Duke has been patient enough to have different guys bring the ball up the floor, spread things out, and not throw over the press. Mike Chappelle, number 20, in for Duke. Wow, they gave it to him, so he took it. Now, the stoppage in play here because of the clock malfunctioning. Do you think that broke any of the rhythm here early? Well, I think that Duke was on a nice roll when it stopped the first time, and that may have uh, cost them a little bit. But I think these two teams are so well coached, so fluid, that it's not going to be that effective. And there's Evans, my man off the bench. And speaking of fluid, he's got so much experience as a player. Freshman year at Manhattan, he was the Metro Atlantic Rookie of the Year. And then all-conference the next year. And then sat out a year with a great Kentucky team to practice against. So we're talking about a very much of a seasoned veteran. Rejection by McGlure. Oh, right off the bench. It's his seventh of the regional so far. Six against the Bruins on Friday night. McGlure setting some big screens outside. And obviously, Bram will not go follow him out there because he knows he's not going to shoot on a little pick and roll. Shepard. Oh. And they take it away. They call him for a charge. Well, that, in my estimation, was a makeup for what happened down on the other end of the floor. Shepard elevates in the air. I told you he's an excellent leaper. He goes up in the air. To, my, to me, there is no charge in that play at all. Looked like McLeod may have left his feet that, just a little bit, too. Absolutely. But I think there was a foul on the other end of the floor, and that was just one of those makeups. 19-18, too. McLeod back it in. Got projected last time, comes back, try it again. McLeod, though, getting his shot over the top of Evans better than he did getting his, when he tried to get his shot uh, over Padgett. Cameron Mills in for Kentucky, 21. Notice how Duke is trying to force Kentucky to the baseline. Ah. Lands back in his arms, but knocks it out of bounds. Duke ball. The object there, force to the baseline and then get your weak side help and use the baseline to be another defender on your team. Something that years ago would have been considered a, a mortal sin to allow your man to go baseline. Dean Smith, again, one of his great innovations is something that he really made popular. A lot of coaches have copied it over the years. Good decision by Trajan Langdon not to take a shot that wasn't there. Takes this one, though, and Langdon two of three today. When you're not shooting well, Jim, the key is to have better shot selection. That was a very smart move by Trajan Langdon. Of course, an outstanding student of not only the academics at Duke, but of basketball as well. So very good decision. Hold outside, called on Langdon. Edwards for Shepard. And Cameron Mills, who has only 
scored on two free throws in the NCAA tournament. 0 for 6 from the field, 0 for 4 from 3. And he'll shoot one more. Billy, you look at this Kentucky team. Which player do you think had the highest output in any one game this season? Yeah, it's really interesting. And the man on the foul line here, Cameron Mills, 31 against Florida. And we know, as we pointed out before, this guy was the highest scorer Kentucky had going into last year's Final Four in the NCAA tournament. That's probably why Trajan Langdon was trying to fight over that screen. Kids watch TV, they've got pretty good memories. Duke has not gone inside to Brand, in my opinion, the way they ought to. He has been ignored, and is doing a good job on him, but they've got to show an inside game. Rand's only attempted one shot from the field, made it. Langdon got stuck. Rojo collects it, seven on the shot clock. Out nice. to the cloud, top of the key three. Beautiful. That's experience right there. McLeod realized that Wojo was in trouble. Wojo penetrates and kicks out. Jim, I thought that the Elton Brand had two baskets. He got one right away, and then he had that little double clutcher inside. Two free throws for Brand and one field goal. There's another good screen by McGlure. Edwards, way short, had a hand in his face. Chappelle comes out, Carowell returns. Now, Jim, this is probably the first time this year that the Kentucky players had to look at a bench like theirs. You know, they're normally used like the other night against UCLA. You see they're basically playing with four experienced players and no place to go off that bench. Kentucky just feasted on it. Langdon feels like he's got the hot hand tonight. And that was from a good five feet beyond the line. He's got that beautiful follow through, but I think he's still fading a little bit to the left. Right back, Hatchet misfires. Here comes Duke, up seven. Rojo was looking ahead. Kentucky's gotten away from trying. Well, that's a rush shot there. Not a good idea. Carowell, though, found the right spot for the rebound to the line for two. And here's where. Kentucky, Normie makes good runs on people, Jim, that are tired at this point. But you can see what the Duke bench is doing to them. They're coming in with just as fresh legs at this point in the game as Kentucky normally has. Carowell will shoot two. Duke's bench this season is only outscored on four occasions. Missouri's bench outscored them. And then, oddly enough, Clemson, all three times they played, outscored the Duke bench. But you know, point something out here, and Wojo made a good comment in the newspaper. He said, I, I think, when I think of Kentucky and their bench, I think of Clemson and their bench. Because Clemson could come off there with physical players, with experience, played a lot of minutes. Shimu Evans back in for Kentucky. Mills out, Chris Carrollwell's top two games of the season. Came in big games, the last two meetings against North Carolina. Gives Duke its biggest lead, 29-20. And Duke gives Kentucky some of their own medicine with a little full court pressure. Wojo dives for it, still Kentucky ball. Padgett said Wojo kicked it, but he really didn't. The ball was dribbled right on Wojo's foot. And he will go on the floor to dive for a loose ball. <laughs> His comment when they booed him in Lexington says, I don't mind it because when they boo me, it means they're not cheering for their team. Kids got a lot of moxie. A lot of floor burns. Travel. Kentucky, Jim, has got to go inside the Nazi Muhammad. They're getting totally perimeter oriented here. He's a big target inside, and they should start looking for him. Saul Smith comes in, the coach's son, freshman. Turn around by McLeod. What a season he's enjoyed. The senior from Jersey City, all ACC. Well, maybe he got used to playing against Kentucky, and I'll tell you why. One of his high school teammates was a guy named Roderick Rhodes. Ring a bell to you? Robert Rhodes, who started at Kentucky with big expectations, ended his career at Southern Cal. Now in the NBA. Travel again by the Wildcats. Nazi getting a little frustrated from not touching the ball. He just needs to remain patient. 
The cloud sits down. Mike Krzyzewski really going ahead and opening the doors with this bench. He's got so much confidence in them. No Duke turnovers over 11 minutes into the game. That's the perfect game that Christian Leitner had against Kentucky where he was 10 for 10 from the floor and 10 for 10 from the foul line. Farewell. He can explode, can he? And it led to a basket for a 13-point lead. Eight for Carowell. Dumping it inside. Here's Muhammad. Rejected by Battier. And Wojo strips it loose. Gets Timeout called by Battier. In the consolation game, Texas Western played Ken Kentucky for the championship that year. Rupp's runs with Pat Riley and Louis Dampier, Larry Connolly. Kentucky team that beat Duke in the national semifinals. Kentucky goes a little zone here. Langdon, three, short. Back the way on the shot again. And look at this, he gets it right back. Look at the hands of Saul Smith. Somehow he just well, took his eye off of it. The most dangerous player to block out is the guy that took the shot, because he's got the best idea of where the rebound is going to go. You've got to put a body on it. Loose ball again. Well, Duke had it for a moment. Turner. Battier oh, again getting up there. 36 to 22. Grand off and running there. Nazi Muhammad not able to keep up with him. And look at who's playing him. Evans down in this uh, area of the zone. Battier, baseline jumper, freshman on the board. This is kind of amazing, Jim. These freshmen are playing like they've been around Duke University wearing that jersey for five years, not one. Tubby Smith wants to calm things down. He calls it 20. They were there. Brand was there, Avery. That's like one of those fishermen stories, the one that got away. Well, in a particular case, there were three of them that got away. 17-point run. Can they stop it? McGlure does. That's, that's the answer for Kentucky. Good advice by Tubby Smith. They've got to get their interior game started here. A lot of time on the clock. They don't have to worry about it. We've seen incredible comebacks in this tournament. And this is the short one. That's the second foul on Brand, I believe. The blur down. Looks like he's hurt. Brand run into him. I couldn't tell, Jim. It, it, there was a lot of clashing of bodies down there, and I'm not so sure it wasn't even Evans. McLeod and Burgess for Duke. Return, Brand sits with Battier. So while McGlure goes to the bench, Muhammad will come back. See the banging on inside? No, it was, it was Brand. He hit him with the elbow. He had already hit the floor before uh, Evans came down on him. One and one for Evans. Shimu Evans was really familiar with the Kentucky program. He worked a couple of summer camps at Rupp Arena during some of Rick Pitino's summer camp. Worked as a counselor. So they ice McGlure and Evans knocks down two free throws. It was 21-20 Duke at one time. Then they exploded in front 38-20. Four unanswered back by Kentucky. Say a brand will do that when you run into him. What a body he has for just a freshman. He got hit with an elbow in that case. Yes, he did. And Jim, notice how Duke is taking on the press of Kentucky. Much different than what Utah did to Arizona yesterday. They're basically clearing out and letting one man beat the press with a dribble. Remember, Utah yesterday so effectively threw over the top of the press and then set up an attack down inside with their big men. Had the open three and the foul wide of the mark. Ahead to Shepard. The trailer, Muhammad, no whistle, puts up the shot. Tough break for Kentucky. They'd rather have somebody else to trailer on the break other than Muhammad. <laughs> Wojo and Muhammad wrestling on the floor. There's that baseline again, forcing him baseline. And a block called on Burgess. But as we talked about, McGlure can come in off the bench to pick up some fouls to save Muhammad. Burgess is doing that right now for Mike Krzyzewski for Brand. You've got fouls to waste there. And Burgess, who's going to be an outstanding player, 
really working hard for this Duke team. Gets in some valuable minutes. That's his second. Two on the freshman Burgess, two on Battier. And all SEC center, Nazi Muhammad. Ten team fouls on Duke, so double bonus the rest of the half. You know, Nazi had a chance until Shepard took over to be the first guy since 93 to lead Kentucky in both rebounding and scoring. But Kentucky this year can have their first time since back in the days of Beard having a leading scorer score under 14 points. Ralph Beard, the sensational backcourt player who Adolph Rupp considered the finest point man that ever played, point guard that ever played in basketball, averaged just 12 points a game in 48 as their leading scorer. Golden anniversary of that 1948 championship team at Kentucky. So Muhammad with an air ball on the second attempt. So far, Avery's been very patient, not looking for his shot. A little push, they're calling it awful close inside, aren't they, Jim? Evans can't believe it. We hear now that McGlure has a cut under his eye and a mild case of double vision. He seems to be improving, and they think that he will return. Well, it's really important that he return because that means that Nazi Muhammad would have to play a lot more minutes than he's uh, used to. He only averages 21 minutes a game. The way Duke is contesting every pass, every shot, of, it probably looks like you're seeing double of Duke out there on the double floor right now. McLeod and Avery oh, tips it out. He's falling down. The only play he had was to tip it out to Langdon. Let's see if it leads to points. Burgess misses the chippy and out to Turner. Got to finish that shot inside. Good hit ahead, but again, Nazi Muhammad, not the kind of guy you want to be hitting on the break. Edwards got set. Oh! And Evans, Muhammad put back. Evans made it happen, Jim, kept the ball alive. 38, 26. Nice solid comeback here by Kentucky. They didn't panic at all. Six unanswered by Kentucky after a 17 point Duke run. McLeod to the line. Muhammad, will it be Muhammad or Edwards? I think it's Edwards on the reach in. It is Edwards. Just think about what this means for team spirit. When in February, a group of kids get together and say, hey coach, we want to have a little meeting because we think that we would like to have one of our teammates named Tri-Captain. I mean, that's not the kind of thing that happens every day on every team. And McLeod, of course, was the man that was the recipient of that vote. So he joined Langdon and Wojo. Langdon and Wojo as a, as a Tri-Captain. February 23rd, they held that clandestine meeting and said McLeod needs to join us. So now one of three captains, one of two at the line. Elton Brand has returned to line up. Carowell also back in. Nice backdoor cut. Hadgett converts with the left hand. That was against McLeod who fell asleep on the play. Avery racing back. Brand scoring away by Mills, two on one. Shepard and Mills. Shepard will take it, slams it home. Avery trying to do a little bit too much out there. Tremendous comeback by the Wildcats. 22nd timeout by Duke. Kentucky runs off 10 unanswered. That team also, Jim, in 48, five of those players went on to make the Olympic team. Whoa. Oh, stolen by Turner. Everything breaking down for Duke right now. Mike Krzyzewski needs Wojo back in the game. Shepard driving in, splits the defenders, and it's down to six. Tremendous comeback by Kentucky. Eight for Shepard, 12 Eight. straight for Kentucky. Avery's in too much of a hurry, Jim. And this is a charge, yes, charge on Avery. He's in too much of a hurry, and Coach K could not get the steady senior in there quick enough. And here's what experience sometimes will do, or the lack thereof. That no was a textbook charge drawn Absolutely. by Shepard. And see, Avery made up his mind, Jim, when he was 70 feet from the basket that he was going to take it in there. You cannot make those kind of decisions against a good basketball team. Just three minutes, 20 seconds ago, Kentucky was down 18. We didn't expect either one of these teams to quit, did we? 
Didn't expect <laughs> such large runs, though, you know, for either one of them to yield such huge streaks. This can get it to four. Shepard hits the side of the glass. Well, the one thing that Kentucky does not have, McGlure gives him good defense, but it takes away that opportunity to go inside offensively. McGlure and, and Brand really fighting down in low. He just won't let Brand touch that ball. Langdon, three-pointer. Look at Carrollwell crash the offensive glass. Oh, sensational play because he was going up against Shepard. <laughs> Shepard very seldom is up against a guy that athletically can be his equal. Carrollwell has 10. Breaks a four-minute dry spell by Duke. Shepard again. Oh, is he starting to take over now? Patty A couldn't get there quick enough. Shepard's exhausted right now. And Jim, not only exhausted, he's hurt a little bit. And remember, that ankle injury that he had before probably took a little bit of his conditioning away. Top man today for Kentucky with 10. He's stuck with Patty A down inside. Mojo doesn't get him the ball. That's a foul. They had two defending on Batty A. And it's called on Shepard. Here's where I talked about the five fouls that McGlure can use. He's really doing a good job beating Brand to the basket down inside, putting the body, fighting over the top, using the swim stroke, anything he can to keep the ball away from him. Put Battier on the line, one and one. Battier out of Birmingham, Michigan. Shunned the path to the University of Michigan. That was blazed by Chris Weber from the same high school, Country Day. Battier, one more. How about Michigan giving Ellerby the head coaching position? The only thing is strange, why didn't they give it to him after he won the Big Ten tournament? Now that that decision is over, I'm not going to fall anybody. I think that the right Ellerby, one, wasn't it? He handled himself with so much class throughout the course of the year, he really deserved the opportunity. Yeah, congratulations to Brian Ellerby. 42-34 Duke. George Felton. George Felton sitting, sitting right next to him. That was the assistant. <laughs> The Wildcats trail by eight. Had been down by as many as 18. Good screening by Kentucky, and there's a walk. A rare miscue Turn. by Turner. Well, let, me, let me tell you what happened here, Jim. Turner had the great screen set up by Padgett, but he would rather drive than shoot. So consequently, he just got off track there and created the walk. It's almost better not to screen for him because he's not going to take the jump shot. And he can create his own shot off the dribble so well. Rojo calls out. Play number five. Turner looking for the steal right now. Sitting down pretty low on that dribble. Duke trying to get the ball down inside. But Kentucky doing a great job defensively. Eight on the shot clock. Battier drives on the floor. Oh, yeah. And one. Jim, that was a sensational play. I talk about how intelligent this kid plays basketball. He's in the low post fighting for position. McGlure has him outmatched in the low post. So he steps out, turns and faces on McGlure, puts the ball on the floor, which gives him the advantage, and takes it to the hole. Some play. Right over McGlure and Padgett. Out to Mills. Duke back in front by double digits. Battier is coming off a 6 for 7, 14 points, 7 rebounds, 3 block game against Syracuse. Off the bench. It's kind of starter you want on the bench, huh? He started a large part of the year to <laughs> Battier. That was the night of the freshman on Friday night. Look at this open offense by Kentucky. A lot of screens inside. Evans just surrounded by that Duke defense. Padgett has the three at the top of the key. Don't leave him open. Yeah, Battier was late getting out. Scott Padgett did a real smart thing there, too. He went beyond the defense to set up his jump shot. Final minute of the first half. Notice the difference when... Wojo came back in the game and settled things down for Duke. Avery was just out of control. Put them back in a half court set. Reach in on Mills. 
Stanford advancing to the final four, down with 8.40 to go in the game, 11. Well, Jim, I hadn't seen in-person Stanford uh, last year at all until we got them in the NCAA tournament. We saw what a great job Mike Montgomery did in regard to strategy against Tim Duncan, surrounding Duncan with the big, strong people. Everybody wondered what would happen when Knight would leave there. Could they get enough play in the backcourt to go ahead and complement the great inside presence they had? Obviously, they have. Chappelle in for Duke. And after yesterday's debacle for the Pac-10, you wondered there for a few minutes, uh, at least as Rhode Island was coming down the wire, that they get shut out. Pac-10 back in the final four, though. 30 seconds on the shot clock. About an eight-second differential here for Kentucky. Bajan Lang a little quicker than Mills. Chappelle out there in Padgett. He's got to be aware of that jump shot on the pick and roll. Evans leans in, blocked by Cal. Oh, so out of back. Carwell blocked it, but Evans so quick to the Pat. spot. Carwell with 10 seconds to go in the half. Driving baseline, dishes it out. Chappelle, three, score it with four seconds to go in the half. What a huge play for Duke. Mid-court shot. Hey. Turner looked like it was online. That was a smart play by Carwell. Took it right to the hoop and saw the open man. Mike Chappelle's three gives Duke the 10-point lead. Coming up at the half, Pennzoil at the half, Greg Clark and Coach Smith will be joined by Rick Mancheris, who's taking Utah to the Final Four. 49-39, Blue Devils at halftime, and CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship will continue after this message. That's significant because the last 10 Kentucky opponents had not shot better than 39% in any game. Well, Kentucky had a 17-0 run, a 12-0 run. That's not their best in the NCAA tournament. They remember that 19-0 run they had against St. Louis. They start off quickly and get into their press. Duke with the 17-point run. Kentucky came back with the 12, countered. It's amazing teams of this quality, Jim, to get those kind of runs against each other, isn't it? Wouldn't expect from these two. No. Edwards already with one basket to st start the second half. See if Kentucky gets the ball inside here early to Nazi Muhammad. He likes to seal his man as the ball's rotated. There it is. Padgett, three, short. And there you go again. Shooter not boxed out. Kentucky ball. It's happened in the cloud a number of times here tonight. What do you look for here in the second half, Billy? Well, I look for the two teams to settle down to see if which one can get an inside game going first. Just a little too much for Padgett to bring down. Brands really hustling down the court, trying to get in position before Nazi Muhammad can get there to defend him. Carowell didn't have the ball in his hands. The cloud will give him a second chance. Surrounded by three, he dribbles away for the basket. How often we see guys use the rim to ward off the defenders. That's what McLeod did that time. Nice play. Turner has it stripped out of his hands. Me is Duke with only three turnovers in the first half against that tough Kentucky defense. Went the first 12 minutes without committing one. Trajan Langdon can't get over the top against Shepard. Kind of hurt Kentucky when Shepard got winded and, and uh, somewhat banged up there in the first half. They needed his offensive presence. Langdon, top scorer in the game for Duke, commits his second. Padgett spinning, gives it up to Muhammad. Last minute decision, last split second decision. How about those hands by Nazi Muhammad plus the concentration not to turn his back and go for the rebound. Avery driving in, Bellier plus one. Freshman to freshman. Kind of amazing, isn't it, to see? Look at this, a great play by Naz Muhammad. Look at all the Duke players had their heads turned, assuming it would be a shot. Heck of a play by Padgett, yep. too. But watch Avery give it to Battier at the last minute. And Battier takes it right on in over Naz Muhammad. Three-point play. Battier with nine off the bench. Duke by 11. Edwards wanted it. 
got it. Well, you're going to call the basket anyway. You thought that Brand got a piece of it. Oh, there's the They've steal got Edwards from ahead. behind. Very seldom do you get away with that play. Turner doesn't get the roll. And Battier was back to get the board. Duke not wanting to force anything right here. Avery back in. Kind of interesting. You know, Trajan, I mean, uh, Wojo hurt his elbow on that last play. Very seldom see a man steal from behind. Battier inside the line. All air. Just a little net. Not the kind you want. Well, he was turning away from his normal shooting position, Jim. A lot of times, unless you're just one great shooter, that's a hard shot to make. You just don't have your normal rotation and power when you're turning counterclockwise. Interesting that Avery would be put in this game so early after what happened to him in the first half, where he was a little bit too frenetic. Backdoor cut. Another foul on Duke. That's Brand. Is that his third? Number three on Elton Brand. And he picked that one up trying to cover for the backdoor cut. Padgett's run that very well tonight. Doesn't take long to replace him. McLeod for Brand. I think advantage Kentucky right here. They ought to, at this point in time, Jim, 54-45, remember that foul because Nazi Muhammad now should start to operate. Played by Battier. Catch it. Tipped by Muhammad. And Duke surrounds it. Now a matchup down on the other end is probably going to put Nazi Muhammad on Battier. Padgett stays with McLeod. Boy, these teams match up so perfectly. Even when they go to the bench, they've got guys that they can match up with. is Avery's equal when he puts the ball on the floor. Carowell guarded by Edwards. And McLeod wants to take it on Padgett. That's going to be a hand check by Padgett. Went for the fake. Number two. Kentucky person on number 34, Scott Padgett, is second to team. Second. Scott Padgett desiring that championship ring. He had to sit out the 96 season. Did not participate on that championship team. Well, Jim, but he shows a lot of character. He sits out because of academic deficiencies. Not only learns his lesson basketball-wise, but comes back down and he's all SEC academic player. Avery with the jump shot. His first two of the game. Shows you the confidence Mike Krzyzewski has in these freshmen. Puts Avery right back in the game where he really had problems in the first half. Not where Nazi Muhammad wants to be offensively against Battier. Almost turns it over. Now wants to help with a pick. Shepard to Muhammad. No whistle. Now there's one. And that's a push foul by Kentucky. Tough break for Tubby Smith's team. They thought they were going to get maybe a call yeah. on the Muhammad shot. Tough break for Kentucky. Moore comes back in, and so Duke uh, really gets a break here. I thought by the time that Brand was out, Nazi Muhammad may be able to operate. Might have been called a charge, Jim. But that one wasn't called either. Boy, Badia goes for him, too, yep, doesn't he? He does. He knows how to set his feet and take that charge. It was the third foul on Edwards. Wojo is back in after a brief absence. Avery back-to-back -back baskets. Impossible shot. He just took Shepard on that play. He's some explosive scorer, isn't he? Came off the bench at 21 against Arizona and Maui. That ought to tell us a little something. One of his first college yep. games. Carwell. Not Way a, short of the three. Shot. McClure had a hand in his face. Certainly altered the shot. Edwards takes middle. Reach in. Foul's going to be called on Wojo. Jim, that shows you when you take a bad shot, it throws your whole team out of sync. Here we see the shot by Avery going in on Shepard, goes underneath him and still gets the ball. Duke freshmen have 17 points all total in this game today. We'll be right back. Rick Roby, Jack Gibbons, fine basketball team. 
Saul Smith in for Kentucky. He's looking, Wojo screaming to the referee, five seconds, doesn't get the call. Always on top of it. Shepard three. Probably not a good shot. Mattie on him. Mattie running the floor, but no lane there, no avenue. Langdon steps in. Again, a reach-in foul. Boy, they're calling some reach-touch fouls here. Padgett. Again, give Trajan Langdon a lot of credit for using his head there on that play. He realized on, as the ball was rotated that McGlure got stuck with him. So instead of trying to shoot over him right here, he puts the ball on the floor and goes right by him. You've got to take what the defense gives you. He'll shoot two. Langdon went over 1,000 for his career. Point total this season, along with Ricky Price, which gave Duke 44 all-time. And Kentucky matches that figure, 44 all-time 1,000-point scores. Peyton Lang last year set a new school record at Duke, making 89.7% of his free throws. This year, right back on schedule. Not quite that, but close. It was over 90% at some points this season. Had one stretch where he made 29 in a row. Okay, Kentucky's missed its last five shots. And McGlure can't find the handle. Those suspect hands exactly. cost him. And look at Wojo. Whoa, whoa, he's tangled got, here. What is he doing here? What is McGlure he's hurt. doing? Wojo is hurt. Well, McGlure wouldn't let him go. That was crazy. Wojo trying to straighten out his back here. Stretch it out. Yeah, I, I don't know why. McGlure just didn't relax. And he had him twisted up inside. Now, here you see Patchett didn't want to throw that ball in there, Jim, because he knows McGlure doesn't have good hands or the move that he's going to make. Oh. Now, see, he has him right here. All he has to do is relax and let him alone. It's ridiculous. And now, Wojo oh, slaps his hands. hands. He says, hey, you can't keep me down for oh, a while. No, he is a tough one. He's a tough one. Son of a, you know, we talk about sons of coaches supposed to understand the game. If you're a son of a longshore, I mean, what, are you, what are you supposed to do there? Yeah. Are you supposed to be tough or not? You can know he's going to be tough. I guarantee you. Good hit ahead. Pass almost got away. Saved by Carowell in the corner. McLeod three. McLeod he's, he's struggling from the field. Well, he's taken bad shots, Jim. He didn't need to take that shot. McLeod four of 12. When you have a lead like this, you can get much better shots. Evans drills a three. That's what that bad shot does to you. You take it, the other team comes down and scores. You've got nobody in position to rebound. Kentucky's going to a zone here. Langdon, the rebound and put back. Tough shot for a guard to make, 12 feet moving in. You said he had to step up today after a horrible NCAA tournament, and I, Langdon's done that. I, I love his comments, though. He said, you know, shooting is one part of the game. The other parts of my game I can come through with. And now Shepard hits two straight threes for Kentucky. 61-51 Duke. Kentucky in the zone now. Now here's where McLeod can become dangerous. They really have four guys against this zone that can all shoot threes. Avery, Carowell, McLeod, and Trajan Langdon. It's a pretty good team against the zone. Which way is this going? That's going to be on Smith. On Smith. Dangerous move to play zone with those four guys on the floor. Brand back in. Chappelle also for Duke. Chappelle will hit that big three-pointer from the corner to end the half. Let's see if Kentucky stays in the 2-3 zone. And Wojo marks his return. Solid minutes in the second half by Avery when he had that rocky first half. They stay in the zone. Langdon from the wing. Three off the front of the rim. Tip back out to him, though. Chappelle, six foot eight. Well, they've really extended the zone out. There ought to be somebody in the foul line here. To the corner, McLeod 
over everything. Well, just when I said they've got a good team to hit yeah. against this floor up ahead. Boy, that was a good uh, catch, but he traveled. Tough break there. Great hands by McGlure, considering he's a guy we've been staying on about not having the good hands. He caught that one on the run. That was a tough catch. It sure was. Ball was thrown high by Evans. McGlure makes a tremendous catch here, but just can't finish. Wojo to the middle, pulls it out, Chappelle three. Just as he did to close the first half. There's that dribble, drive, and kick out. The type of basketball made famous by the Europeans. Americans, in one case, even though it's our game. Best move of the night from McLeod, and it's stripped away. What do you think, Jim? Looked like a charge to me. Yeah, McGlure, McGlure got over there. Only the fifth Duke turnover. Devils by 13. Well, think about how key that call was. If it goes the other way, McLeod's going to the line. Well, I'm possibly not, putting Duke up 16. I'm not questioning the call. I'm questioning the fact an official doesn't need to have that kind of conversation with the coach. Shepard blocked by Brand. But that's why Mike was upset. He realized that could have been a huge point. Well, Mike's got an able staff over there. So while he was looking and bearing down with that referee, he had three guys that have all been to the final four talking to his team. Hey, while Brand was out of action, Duke increased its lead, and now they add to it again. A three by Wojo. And he looks over at Mike Krzyzewski and gives him the signal. Turner trying to answer it back. And again, Duke not blocking out the shooter, and it costs him again. They have the Pizza Hut. All-Stars here, academic All-Stars. The salutes to Kentucky's Jeff Shepard, majoring in math education, and Trajan Langdon from Duke, who has a 3.2 GPA, majoring also in mathematics. Jim, kind of interesting, you mentioned Trajan Langdon, Alaskan, and he said, you know, I've never been behind a dog sled. This man on the foul line, Wayne Turner, goes up to play in the Alaskan shootout, decides he's going to try the dog sled routine, gets lost in the snow. <laughs> so he should have talked to Duke's academic. Missing Alaskan, an action Alaskan for a while. native and said, hey, you know what? You just don't get behind that dog slip. One of two for Turner. Wojo with the head up, looking to make that pass. He thought he had Langdon on the wing. Hey, when Brand went out, they were up nine. When he returned, they were up 13. McLeod. It goes. Yep, this time the call the other way. Kentucky really getting spread out defensively now. They went to the zone, it wasn't effective. They go back to man to man and didn't match up well. Quite a move by McLeod, shifted that ball in the air. Young man, the first transfer, will he be the last transfer that Duke ever had? He was recruited by Mike Krzyzewski out of St. Anthony's, as everybody knows, went to St. John's, but he is their first transfer. Wanted to go to Duke until Duke gave a scholarship to Joey Beard, same position, then once Beard transferred, well, McLeod was ready to leave St. John's, so he ended up at Duke anyway. And you know what? Beard had a fine career when he went to Boston U, so it worked out good for both kids. Duke by 17. Evans want to post up down inside. Shepard, tough shot, got it. Real leaner. One of the things that Duke has caused problems for Kentucky, it's amazing they've got so many guys that can bring the ball up the floor. Carrawell showing his ability. Trajan Langdon has that ability. Trajan really doing a good job tonight, taking good shots. Inside and uh, clear hack. hold and hack. Well, he had to foul. <laughs> now what Stanford going on to the final four with its win over Rhode Island. Stanford almost landed Trajan Langdon out of high school. It was down to Stanford or Duke for Trajan. His father one time was a professor at Stanford. And has a degree from there. They called that now. Well, intentional. Yes, an intentional foul to shoot two. And the ball, Jim. And what Evans was saying is uh, he, he thought that he got him before he was in the act of shooting, but he didn't realize by wrapping his arm around him it was worse than getting him in the act of shooting. Number 13, Grant. You'll see the play right here. 
Uh, Evans, see, he, when he grabbed him from around from behind, you got to call that an intentional foul. He was not playing the ball in any way, shape, or form. Brand from outstanding freshman player who made, uh, would have certainly made all freshman team in the ACC, but he was out with that uh, foot injury for 15 games. Darrell, short. Battier, look at those hands. Saves it for Duke. And again, another good decision by Trajan Lang. Now the clock becomes real important not to take any bad shots if you get. We're midway through the second half. Carrowell. And out to Evans. No. Langdon tips it to Wojciechowski. And Wojo is going to say just that. Let's get better shots. Evans on Wojo. Boy, is he aggressive, huh? He thinks he can guard the little guy. Shuts him off, cuts him off. Langdon. Carrowell put back. Boy, what a big game this man has had. Well for Carrowell. Evans, three, his second of the game. Turner answers with a good dribble penetration and kick out. Made only 14 threes on the season. Evans, he's knocked down two tonight. Doesn't look comfortable on the shot. He just rolls him in there, doesn't he, Jim? Both of them. Yep. And Tubby Smith wisely got out of that zone defense. Thinks he's matching up pretty good right now, what he's got on the floor. Under nine to play. Tried to split it out for Brand inside. Good block. Stripped away by Kentucky. Back is Langdon. And Edwards out of the pack. Snaps it over to Turner. Here's where Turner's dangerous. To the corner. Padgett three. They need it. They got it. Turner, good job. 71-60. It was 17 just a moment ago. Back-to-back -back threes, Evans and Padgett. Turner made that play. He is so dangerous in the open court. Carrowell, he's been the big man, but not this time. Evans will fight him for the ball. They get Here. it under 10. Here comes Turner again. Edwards was planted on the wing. Turner. I, I love him in the open court. And he's going to the line. Jimmy, he can take that ball 60, 70 feet as well as anybody in college basketball because he's able to finish when he gets down inside, even against the trees. Watch this crossover dribble. No way Wojo's going to stay with him. Terrific job by Kentucky. Third foul on Wojo, and Turner can trim it to eight. Jim, coming into this year, for the two years, Turner has shot 56% free throws. That's one of the things you don't want your point guard to do, to be a poor free throw shooter. The answer's this time, though. Nine points unanswered by Kentucky. Get back into it. And one of the things Mike Krzyzewski wanted was to go inside some. And Nazi Muhammad cut off Brand, never got anything going inside. McLeod kicks it back up, back into McLeod, turn around. That's his shot, couldn't Tipped get it. Tipped by Evans. Duke ball. Timeout. Boy, guy's just giving everything now. Evans goes over the top of press row. What's the biggest run we've had in the second this half? This Kentucky run right here of nine. Nine. Kind of interesting. Kentucky comes back out in the zone. Avery fighting that zone. Duck under pass. The crowd able to get it back. Calls the, has to call the timeout with the double team on the end line. Stuck in the corner. It's a 20 second timeout. These two almost tangled at the start of the year over in Maui. So both were there in the Maui classes. Arizona. Classic. Yep. Arizona got in the way. They didn't meet because Kentucky lost to Arizona, then Duke beat the Cats the next day in the final. Here they are again, trying to see who will land the last spot for the Alamo Dome. Jim with Grand on the bench. Kentucky goes back. They, they went into the zone. Now let's see if Tubby on that timeout changes his defense, goes back to his man. Tough pass. Shepard 
Well, oh, we'll get called play. for that. Reach in. They were just off balance there. Kentucky had Duke in trouble. Third on Shepard. One and one coming for Wojo. From Severna Park, Maryland. Senior one and one. Parents are here. Maryland High School Player of the Year. He's come a long way from then. Peggy and Ed leading for one more. Doesn't fall. Seven minutes and some change to go. And free throw has become very important here. Edwards steps out for the three. Four straight trips, that was getting the, three points. That was the same play that Duke used in the first half to get McLeod open. The Kentucky press now has five men on one half of the court, Jim. Duke's going to have to go long, or they're going to find themselves turning that ball over. And from behind, Turner collapsed on Wojciechowski. He'll go back for another one-on-one -on -one situation. They've had three three-point baskets and a three-point play by Turner on their last four well, trips. What Turner's doing, he's taking people inside. Remember the play in the first half where McLeod stepped out? It's exactly the same play Kentucky ran there. Dribble penetration, then curl out over the screen and hit that three. Wojo, fresh off of one of two performance at the line. Long. And Shepard out battles Battier for the rebound. Ahead to Evans. Oh, Shepard just took one in the jaw from McLeod. Trying to fight through the screen. You can really feel this momentum swinging. That for McLeod is his fourth. Seventh team foul on Duke, so Shepard will shoot a one and one. Oh, no, no, Jim, they're yeah, that's what Billy, that was really a vicious blow. Yep. You're gonna see I end the ball here. Watch the right side of your screen, fighting through. There it is. And Shepard gets a chance for two and the ball for Kentucky. Seventy-two, sixty-eight, Duke. Intentional. And now a timeout for Duke. Mike Krzyzewski trying to get the crowd out of this ball game and his team back into it. So they call it an intentional foul on McLeod. Kentucky ball. Just under seven minutes to go. All right, Kentucky with possession. That was intentional. They call that foul. Inside, and Evans has to chase it out. That's a dangerous play coming out four down. You just want to get the ball inbounds. As efficient as Kentucky has been in recent possessions, you don't want to try to go for a home run here. Turner, oh, it's the roll. That's a four-point trip for Kentucky. And they're within now two. This, this probably reminds Duke of the runs Arizona made against them in Maui and the runs that North Carolina successfully has made against them. Tough shot, Langdon and Evans with the rebound. Two players down, one for Kentucky, one for Duke. Two to tie, three for the lead. Evans wants that ball inside. Boy, it's been Evans' energy that's really sparked it. And Wayne Turner forcing that ball down inside. Shepard cutting through. Bob. He'll go to the line. Tie the game if he makes them both. Turner, when he penetrates, has such a soft touch. He really does, Jim. From 12 feet on in, he just has that ability to glide. You've got to make him shoot the ball outside because he can drive and finish. Within one. Well, you take that last trip where they had the intentional. Look at Kentucky's last five possessions. Three, 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 four. And that's how they got back into it in three minutes. There's a man who is 
looking on. Oh, rattles out. That would have tied it. A little nervous. He's never lost a ball game in a regional final. Mike Krzyzewski, seven for seven. And he's concerned now, as his entire bench is. He double dribbled. Give Edwards a lot of credit. He faked at Wojo. Wojo looked to pass and picked it up, then put it back down. It was 71-54 Duke with 9.30 to go in the game. Good crossover dribble by Turner. Turner, not this time. The roll doesn't work his way. Right now, what Duke needs, Jim, and this sounds crazy, they need a three. The cloud. He almost walked. He did walk. No call. Out to Avery. Padgett tips it away. And tie up Kentucky ball. No, no it's going to be out. Duke ball. It's time. Duke ball. And what happened, McLeod came time over. Time out first. Avery had possession. McLeod came over and got the time. And what Tubby is concerned about is said, hey, my guys had their hands on the ball too. Why isn't, why isn't it a held ball? And if they call the held ball, the arrow belonged to Kentucky. All right, you'll see it right here. It's Avery's ball at this point. I'll tell you what, that was Duke's last timeout. We'll be right back. Donna Smith looks on. Kentucky trails by one. This is a key shot here for Duke. Blocked by Padgett. They call the block, however, on Allen Edwards. And Duke has not been shooting free throws well. Battier goes to the line. In this half, Duke three of nine from the line. 72% free throw shooter goes to the line. Jim, the efficiency that you pointed out in regard to Kentucky coming down the court to score with those threes and then that four-point play, it's amazing. One more for Battier. Four fouls on the senior Edwards. And he's going to sit down. W. Smith really orchestrating this game nicely here. Wants to save him for that last three minutes. Brings in another senior, Cameron Mills. Duke in front by three. And picking up. I think Wojo slaps the floor here for some defensive intensity. He's got his hands full with Turner. Turner drives on him, puts it up, and wow. He is amazing with Three that Three circles of that rim, it looks like. 74, 73, Duke. Battier had position. Padgett almost got to the spot. Tipped up and in by McLeod. Kentucky wanted basket interference. Well, they probably should have had it. That ball was on the rim, and there goes Turner again taking Wojo. Not this time. Tipped over by Shepard into the arms of Wojo. Oh, I can't believe the shot, Jim. Ah. Open three, Battier with the putback, missed the chippy, and Turner comes out. Surprise, Wojo took that jumper. This could tie it. Oh. Crashing the boards, and a and foul. ball against Kentucky. You'll see Turner with his crossover dribble, then he just explodes on Wojo at the end. Shoots that ball on the way up, much, much like Antoine Jameson. Now you see Battier going in with a good power move, and then McLeod comes over the top, not being blocked out for the putback. Evans can't believe it, laying on the floor. Double bonus the rest of the way. Kentucky over the limit, so two for McLeod. He's 0 for 3 from the line today. Good follow through on the shot. The two big men for Kentucky on that bench. Tubby Smith liking the matchup and the quickness he has on the offensive end of the floor. Long. One of two. Shepard skies for the board. Kentucky had it down to one. Now down four. Four ten remaining. Shepard looking to step out, wanting to screen for his jump shot. Evans tips. Evans got it. Battier had to help out. 77-75 Duke. Boy, that Evans brings a lot when he comes off that bench, doesn't he? Having a huge game. Great intensity. Out high on McLeod. And Avery, the freshman now, at the point for Duke. Gives it up Langdon. 
Waits for Shepard to jump by and banks it home. Nice smart play. You got Cameron Mills in the air. I think that's a matchup that Duke can take advantage of. Evans got position. No place to go down in there. And Duke picks up the loose ball with Avery. As opposed to the first half, Avery brings that ball back out. Now here's a matchup. Avery can take Mills. He's a lot quicker. I think they should get the ball in Avery's hands out front. He can beat Mills off the dribble. Then on the shot clock. Langdon no, not on a good the run. Shot. Right in the arms of Evans. Bad possession by Duke University there. Turner wants to drive again. Pull up jumper. Down the two. Shades of Philadelphia coming on here in St. Petersburg. The SEC Tournament's MVP putting on a show. March 28th, 1992. These two in a classic. This is the first time they've met since. McCoy shot again. Duke taking bad shots, Jim. Kentucky can tie it with a two. Take the lead with a three. And Turner in that open court. Just loving it. Scored 62 in a high school game. He must think he's back in Boston. He's got to look like he's in total control for the tie. Tipped out. Mills for the lead. Oh! They've been waiting on it. That's his first basket of the tournament. Cameron Mills. On a tip out. And you know, here's where Mike Krzyzewski would like it to use a timeout, Jim. But he doesn't have one. It's Kentucky's first lead of the game. In the paint, good pass. McLeod hacked by Shepard. Tipped see out to Cameron Mills. Of all people, again, look, Jim, no block out by Duke players. Avery should have been out there on his man. And Mike Krzyzewski wondering when Tubby's going to call a timeout. And he's not going to do it. That foul was on Shepard, his fourth. 1.50 to go. Jim, we may see some substitutions now by Tubby Smith, offense and defense. Coming up after this regional final, 60 minutes. McLeod, one more to regain the lead. 81-80 Duke. Carrollwell in for the shooter. Both coaches are now going to substitute, trying to get on the floor in a half-court set. Their best defenders to go against offensive people. Now Avery's going to try Turner for a while. Got more quickness than Wojo. Avery tipped it away for a moment. Padgett has Brand out way away from the basket. He'll drive on the freshman. Left-handed. Got it back. Padgett out to Edwards. And Evans again. Blocked oh. by Brand. Nobody can get the ball. And that should be a foul on Wojo. And Wojo called for it indeed. His fourth. Can It'll be a one and one. Kentucky sending five men to the boards, Jim. So consequently, Duke finds themselves pushed under the basket in a rebound situation. You can see how far into the basket the Duke players are. You see that Kentucky in the situation got them actually out of rebounding position because they're too far under the basket. Wojo with four. Shepard on the other side with four. And the one player in the Kentucky starting lineup who yesterday said he remembered the 92 game in Philadelphia, Scott Padgett, one and one, said he cried when Leitner hit the shot in Philadelphia in 92. Ties it. Kentucky native, Scott Padgett from Louisville. One more for the lead. All tied at 81. Kind of pulled his hands back on that shot, Jim. Turner. 
Wojo see, had a chance to get way past him. But yeah, but see, Wojo can't finish off when he gets inside as Turner can. A minute to go. Another Duke Kentucky Classic. Avery in the lane. Boy, Duke is really taking some bad shots here. It's all one-on-one -on -one basketball. And not the player you want no. taking the shot. And Mike Juszczewski, again, with no timeouts, can't reunite his team. Three-pointer. Huge. Huge. Kentucky 84-81. And again, with no timeouts, Tubby Smith doing a great job here, not calling any timeouts himself. He won't let... Mike Krzyzewski get reorganized. 25 seconds. Four second differential. Here's McLeod open. They don't get him the ball. McLeod to tie it. Too much. Rebound Turner. And Here a foul. Kentucky. Double bonus. To the rest of the way. Kentucky was led to the regional final by four homegrown kids. This was the play at the end. The shot maybe, well, well maybe what some would argue the most famous shot in college basketball history. Leitner's turnaround to win it 104-103. The four Kentuckians called the Unforgettables. They hanged a, a banner. They hung a banner for them at Rupp Arena for Feldhaus and Woods. Farmer and Pelfrey. Turner now with one more try to get that critical well, two possession advantage. Exactly, Jim. This is this free throw puts it into two possessions with 16 seconds. A miss here allows Duke a good uh, three-point shooting team to tie. He gets it's it. a four-point lead. Don't you know the unforgettables are here vicariously through this 98 edition. Wojo should take it all the way to the basket. Tried to give it up to Brand. Good hands. Missed the short one. Tipped out. Duke ball. Eight seconds remaining. What a furious rally. It was 71-54 Duke with nine and a half to go. 31 to 10 since that time. McLeod, three, got it! Six seconds to go. It's down to one. We've got a foul right away. Edwards will go to the line for two with four and a half remaining. Oh, how critical. People wonder why coaches save their timeouts. The man in our studio was one of the all-time masters at saving timeouts, Dean Smith. Mike Krzyzewski got in a situation with about five minutes to go. He had no timeouts left. Never could reunite his club. Here's McLeod with a huge three. Again, double bonus. He'll shoot two. And Duke, Duke will have to go length of the court on Kentucky again. <laughs> and a whistle. Well, Mike Krzyzewski trying to do whatever he can to freeze the shooter a little bit. It's what Gary Williams did against North Carolina in the ACC semifinals. Carrollwell comes in for Duke. Edwards 64% free throw shooter. He's not attempted one today. He'll shoot two. Duke again out of timeouts. Young man whose mother passed away during the season. One more. And now Duke will try to repeat history. Without a timeout, they can't set up a specific play. Who will try to play the role of Lakeman? To have the inbounds pass, Kentucky calls the timeout. So Duke will have a chance to set something up. Two to tie, three for the win. There it is, Avery. will it be revisited? Avery crossed the midcourt strike, puts it up. No, not this time. Kentucky's going to the final four. 